Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a voice recording to make this kind of uh, logo embroidery effect uh, in Blender using geometry nodes. I know that the people have already done tutorials regarding these topics. So um, whether you like it or not, perhaps trying a different approach, uh, we are going to start. So let's go. As always, I'm going to use the presets, which you can download for free from the link in the description. So let's just start with a plane. And basically, I just need a text mesh. So string to curves. And uh, I'm going to type in blender. And then let's take a center and the middle. So this is our curve instance. You can try to change the font. But here, I'm just going to stay with default, B font. And then I need a, uh, let's say, I need a volume of this text. So I made a new preset, which is text mesh. I talked about it, which is basically just a fill curve so that you get a volume and you use a solidify modifier. And then we, there's a voxel with mesh inside. Okay, it's too low. Uh, so you basically uh, remeshed everything. It's not 100% uh, necessary, but it may benefit you uh, a lot and we are going to change this extrusion scale we just need a little bit of volume next we basically just need to instance lines regarding it so here let's take a uh, curve linear and we point instance these curve lines perhaps on y-axis so now it becomes like this and you can change the values. Basically, I just want the lines to cover uh, these meshes together. So we join geometry just for a visualization purpose. So something like this, as long as these lines is covering it, uh, is good enough. Sometimes you want to increase the size of your text and uh, increase everything. Uh, the reason is I want uh, as many points included inside as possible. So we can take a curve points preview to actually visualize the points on these curves. And this is good enough, so we can disable it. Uh, once we've done that, I need to realize the instance because I want to access these individual points and then I'm going to isolate. So it's inside volume. And I need to split these curves. Curve split. Based on whether these points are in the volume or not. So if they're inside the volume, then I select them. Otherwise, they will be excluded. So now if I look at this curve, you can see we have this kind of a blender, uh, but I think we need to reverse the selection. So now this looks like it. And you can increase the count so that uh, it becomes more obvious about where, what we are doing. And uh, you can rotate all these kind of curves. You either rotate before, like here, or you rotate it here. It does not really matter as long as it's uh, evaluated after, then it should be fine. So we take a transform geometry and let's just uh, rotate maybe 26 degree. And you can see there are areas not being covered. So we just increase the value and increase the count to make sure more points will be covered during this process. So once we finish the yet, uh, we can do some fourth animation. So these are curves, as we mentioned. So there are points on these curves. And what we do is just a set position. And we take a directional fourth. and uh, I'm elevating the z-axis of these curves 
So now you can see there is an abrupt changes. I'm going to use an empty. So this is an empty object. I'm going to change this empty into the arrow and select this empty. So now you can see this empty is controlling the elevation of these curves. I'm going to use a spline parameter, a spline info. Yes, so it gives the spline center start and index. So I give this a spline center so that uh, every spline is being, is being uh, treated in terms of their centers. Okay. Maybe it might be, maybe it's easier to visualize if I give a bevel curve so that you can see the volume of it. So let's take a value position to control this uh, radius a little bit better. So this is what we are having now. Okay. And uh, once we've done this, I'm going to use a sublime parameter to multiply this four. Because this sublime parameter is going from zero to one from the start to the end of a curve. That's why we are seeing the elevation, but we are going to remap it using float curve. So now you have this kind of uh, shape. I'm going to remap 0 to 1 so that it decrease the scale a little bit. And now you can see there is an elevation of everything. I want to reverse it. You can reverse the direction in this x, y, z, or you can reverse the relationship in this remap zero to one. Uh, probably no. <laughs> probably you want to do that uh, before. Yes. Yeah, whichever way you do, it's essentially the same. And then let's add some base elevation. So it becomes very tall at the beginning, but then it becomes flat. Okay. So once we have this effect, I'm going to trim it as well. So I capture attribute. And I'm going to capture this directional fourth because I'm going to trim it afterwards. And uh, I don't want this spline center being affected when we are elevating it. Because when we are elevating it, the spline center may be shifted elsewhere. So it may give a different result of this directional fourth. So here let's pl plug this directional fourth into the end. And now we're making it flat while we're trimming it. So now we are getting this effect. I think this is basically completed. Next, I want to add some details on the border of my text. So we come back to the initial curve and we realize instance and we resample it. To visualize our resample result better, I'm going to take these uh, points uh, preview to visualize the points we have. By increasing the count, you realize because we are setting a count for every spline. So larger, so longer the spline, actually larger the interval between these points. We can use a length mode to give a more uniform uh, interval between points and then I can point instance a curved line to these points we can disable it you can see it becomes very long so we use a value precision 
to decrease the scale of our curve line and we also need to align this line properly to the normal and the tangent so we take alignment on splice it's basically aligned to normal and the tangent so now it becomes nice we can add the count by decreasing this interval so let's say so currently this is 4 divided by 100 so 0 0.04 so I think this is good once we've done that we need to do the same animation so we firstly realize the instance and then we need to do this uh, set position and the trim curve so we basically capture attributes for this fourth then we set position with the same multiply and uh, combine xyz uh, I think we can directly use it okay and then we are going to trim curve so now we have this effect it's completely procedural so yeah we finish that and finally we just need to join this everything together I do not need this uh, voxel mesh so I just cut the linkage I only need to see these curves and I join this curve together so right now it becomes like this and sometimes you will see this kind of uh, beveled curve without a distance uh, you will not see them in the final render uh, if you turn off this overlay but if you think it's kind of annoying what you can do is you delete spline when this spline is equal to zero so you want to see these points even with your overlay okay it's just uh, makes your feeling a little bit better but uh, this step is not necessary so up to this moment I think everything is being finished you can add the materials and even gradients according to the fall or bounding box or other things you can also change their elevation according to their spine length but I don't think it's necessary in this particular moment so at the end it's just the parameters you increase the count to make it more dense or you can decrease the thickness of these uh, splines and uh, basically that's that's it so I hope you enjoy this video I'll probably see you next time bye bye